Hello, everyone. Merrily Christmas Eve. This show, for me, is one of the most fun topics to play around with, and I hope you will find it the same and discover more about yourself. So I had an interesting thing happen a half hour ago. I just spent uh, six hours typing a script with all the notes, and it suddenly went blank. So after freaking out for a minute, I thought, huh, maybe I'm not supposed to do that. And fortunately, uh, I found a wonderful woman named Ileana Kapulnik, YouTube titled Soul Wanderers, Star Seeds, and Star Travelers on her Awakening Cosmic Reality show. And she is an example of all of those things, which actually in the higher perspective, that will be true for most of us. And so, Ileana, I thank you ahead of time because you have done such a beautiful job of condensing the material I wanted to cover. And so I'm going to use a lot of her information, probably 90% off of her YouTube. So it will still hopefully be very, very beneficial and fun for you. Now, I had promised you to describe the terms wanderer, starseed, and lightworker, and to describe the characteristics of starseeds and lightworkers and wanderers, and also give you 15 signs they may indicate you are one. I'm going to do that. Many of my dear friends, and perhaps you feel this way too, were considered the black sheep of the family. I wasn't in a bad way, just kind of my own spirit, and they just kind of laugh about it. But I'm sure many of you know what that means, or perhaps a gray sheep, <laughs> something like that. And also, I am finding that many children, especially now in their teens, are really struggling with fitting in. And this information would be so helpful for them because I know it's going to resonate with many, many children. And um, especially you may have remembered from one of my previous radio shows when I was talking about a star seed named Kathy who is nine years old. And she, um, when asked the question, how many star seeds are incarnating now on Earth over the last couple generations? I was so shocked at her answer. She said 50% of people incarnating, okay? So I imagine that all of you attracted to the subject today or will listen to it in the future are most likely at least a star seed, if not combinations of soul wanderer and definitely a light worker. All right. So she also said that only, she said 50% incarnate in, but only 20% of us make it. It's dangerous for us to be here, and it is very, very difficult. And she said um, many get hooked into drugs, uh, trying to fit in, or get depressed because they have a strong sense that this world is kind of crazy, and they, they know what to do to shift it. And so they have a hard time. So knowing about this would be like a huge, huge difference for them. And when I've talked to uh, some of the children that uh, the mothers and fathers are sending me, they go away feeling so relieved to have validated what they knew in their heart. So again, uh, thank you so much, Ileana, and uh, please visit her website, and most of the credit of this last-minute information goes to her. And I am in agreement with what I am sharing, what she, which she, you know, things she wrote. I am to in total agreement with it. I wouldn't be sharing something I wasn't. Okay, so let's find out what star wander, or let's call it soul wanders are. So wanderer souls are definitely old souls, and they incarnated a lot a lot, many, many, many lifetimes. And they're not so much attracted anymore to the everyday drama, gossip, and not even really, especially when they get a little older, they're not attracted to material possessions. They almost see it all as a trap. And like mortgage, cars, uh, the need to control life, regular incomes, routine. They find a lot of routine really tedious and 
uh, they find education, a lack of creativity. And so they're willing to deal with a more unpredictable future, which is a good thing considering what we're going through now on the planet, right? So um, instead of collecting things so much, like previous older generations have, they collect stories. <laughs> and these are, can be their own, other people's stories, stories that they read about because they're voracious readers. Uh, they write about stories they remember occasionally from their dreams, past lives, previous incarnations. And therefore, when you meet a wanderer soul, be prepared to hear the craziest stories you will ever hear. Now, I myself am a combination of all three of these definitions. And remember, labels are just labels. They are kind of uh, one of the 12 major archetypes that souls choose to play out in different lifetimes here on Earth, and they are not meant to limit you. They are meant to just play out and explore, but your personas and personalities are um, developed out of that desire to play out that archetype, so to speak. However, I firmly believe that we... I know this in the core of my being, that we are fractals of the one source. And consequently, uh, we contain everything, everything. And we are ultimately one, so we contain all the archetypes, okay? But we do have our favorites. And uh, we love diversity, and especially old souls will choose to uh, change their gender in lifetimes a lot and all different kinds of things for maximum experience. So we love stories, and uh, they're more likely if you're sitting around a fire, you know, fireside, uh, outside, or fire, they're, they're going to talk about stories of fairies and nature spirits and talking with trees, or they're going to share with you some amazing synchronistic event and sign from the universe guiding them to be where they're supposed to be. Or um, the other thing is they love to travel. And this is so true. And they totally immerse themselves. They're interested in the people, the culture, and really understanding the entire earth experience. And they want to experience everything. And this is so true for me. Um, I've traveled uh, a lot, a fair amount, and I spent all my um, extra money and time uh, seeking out, actually, very kind of advanced and usual beings so that I could have someone to talk with because I found that I would start getting angry and impatient and I just want to slap people, you know, and I realized I have to, I have to seek some really interesting people out so that they cause me to raise up to a higher version of myself. And then, oh, and I'm sure many of you feel like that, and once you have connected with that, that lasts a long time. You feel like, oh, that is, you know, it's like taking a, re standing in a refreshing waterfall or something like that. So when I travel, I don't wear a watch. And the reason why I don't do that is it's, it forces, not that I need force because I'm an extrovert, but it forces me to uh, ask people for the time. And that leads me uh, for amazing conversations with them. So one of the signs of a soul wanderer is they travel alone and they excel at traveling alone because they don't have an experience of incompleteness. Uh, we don't feel like we need another person to complete ourselves. Uh, we feel very complete in ourselves and more, you know, not always at the start, but in general. And so we don't get as lonely or alone as easily. So a few of you might have that characteristic. And we kind of collect relationships and fond memories about different people. And the interesting thing about a wanderer is they're hard to domesticate. <laughs> kind of like your feral cat, right? They come into your life like Mary Poppins, and they will just, you know, uh, spread all kinds of wisdom. And then Sometimes they'll move on. Sometimes they'll be friends. You'll be friends forever. But they are kind of more non-attached to doing the regular mores of the, you know, culture. So the most intense time you will have is with a wanderer, by the way. And they will make you question so many things in your life. Uh, you'll laugh a lot, and you'll cry some. 
Uh, they are pretty straight shooters, and some are, uh, most are very kind. I'm more direct than kind, but um, and they will encourage for hidden pain to come out. And then when they they feel like their mission is done, they will kind of move on because these soul wanderers are literally used to wandering through the entire multiverse. Okay, and they are basically collectors of wisdom. They don't believe there's only one truth. They believe there are many different puzzle pieces to build up this concept of complete truth. And this, this resonated so much with me. I remember I was talking to an intuitive, and I was trying to design my website. And I said, every time I try and specify onto one thing, it's too limiting for me. And he tuned in, and he just nailed it for me. He said, you need to do your website as if you were playing a jigsaw puzzle. And when the passion hits you, just like the radio shows and all my different topics, so when the passion hits you, you just write about that or talk about that because you know it is one huge picture and your passion is fitting the puzzle pieces in together to have a huge, great, over big picture understanding of life and why we're here. And that's exactly what Ileana said about the uh, how you can tell soul wanderers because they believe there are many different puzzle pieces to build up on this concept of truth. And they are literally seekers of truth. And they love nothing more than meeting other wisdom collectors to swap their puzzle pieces it's like guys, you know, swapping sports car, you know, sports cards, and uh, they get these pieces out of their wisdom box. They share it, and then they put it in place. And it's like really, really fun for them. And it's it actually is one of the most fun games that I spend my time doing. So um, they that's basically kind of the definition of soul wanderer, by the way. So. Um, what Eliana says that if you have been blessed with a wanderer, you will be blessed when a wanderer comes into your life. Never again will you be next to so much wisdom that's shared from an open and kind heart. And they said you would be well advised to open yourself up to this wisdom and you will hold on to that wisdom. There will be something that a wanderer has shared with you, even though uh, your mind might spin. There will be something shares with you that you will never forget and your life will never be the same again. They are eternal collectors and they generate, generously share their love and usually money and time. And they're, they're often find in um, healing and therapist, every field of work. So they also suffer too because they like star seeds, which we'll get to are, are, home everywhere yet nowhere they are feel they're a part of this world and yet they come from far away so when they cry they're often crying the tears of mother earth for they come in most of them come in as empaths and feel her pain they also feel other people's pain which i'm sure most of these listeners are empaths so their connection with the divine is very strong especially if they are um, encouraged to pursue that and they consider the divine and sacredness their primary relationship that's very true with me every other relationship comes second so in a way they're married to the divine and therefore um, they understand and carry the divinity within them and again they feel whole and they're fine about being in solitude, it doesn't scare them. So their major job is to inspire, to heal, and to share and live in the moment. And um, they will laugh. They often laugh a lot. And when they laugh and enter a room, the, the room lights up. So that's how you can tell soul wanderers in general. So many of you may relate to that. And remember, this isn't, oh, you can only be one or the other. You might be combinations. Most beings who want to be an astronaut, a soul wanderer, or star seed. So let's get into the one that is the most common since it's 50% of the population. So what is a star seed? Star seeds are said to be advanced spiritual beings that have had most of their lives on other planets and realms. So in other words, many more lives than on Earth. 
So I've had an uh, I've had tons of lives on Earth, but I've had an unusually a six to eight times more on other dimensions and realms. So um, it makes learning about what I'm sharing with you not like too weird. You know, we're kind of, uh, we're trained a little bit in expansiveness. And I'm sure many of you are too. So um, this helps them possess spiritual and scientific knowledge. And this knowledge is accessed and dates back hundreds of thousands of years that humans have survived all over the place, all over the multiverse. And also we can access it from the future. And it seems that most Star seeds tend to be benevolent beings, and they seek to help all living beings throughout all the realms in the universe. So they really care about Earth and really care about nature and animals and, and everything, and they tend to have a very big picture of things, very expansive. And so if you're a star seed, you will really love to inspire and probably heal other human beings, or to at least bring light and knowledge that will, here's the key point, uplift the human race. I know that's why Nicole has her News for the Soul, which is all designed on positive news and upliftment. So Nicole is obviously at least a starseed. The starseeds are said to be here in order to participate in awakening others' consciousness and to help the planet's evolution. And it's also possible that the starseeds, quite frankly, are physical descendants of off-worlders, what people like to call aliens, I prefer to call them off-worlds, who've traveled to Earth to be our planet's light workers. And I have found that to be true in my research. Starseeds might also have been birthed through, all right, ready for this, because these are advanced ways of being birthed, through interconsciousness conception, what's referred to as virgin births, akin to stories you've heard about Yeshua, who I believe was a hybrid starseed and a combination of all those things. Another possibility is that any soul can become a starseed when another starseed infuses a soul with intentional light. So if a starseed is lucky enough to have a starseed parent or at least an expansive parent that will listen to them and honor them, then they are kind of ignited themselves, so it will be less likely that they will totally forget who they are, which many star seeds do, part of the human experience that most of us go through. So um, let's see. Most, like I said, forget, almost all of us forget our true origins, and many of us go through existence on Earth without knowing where our souls came from, uh, we, they also have a tendency, especially these younger ones I'm working with, but they forget um, their missions. They feel like they are confused about their purpose or don't know it. However, once they awaken and just have a little guidance of someone reflecting back to them who they are, they clearly get, get clear on what they must do and why they're here as a co-creative starseed. And that's when they start to live out their purpose. And it's so important when they get to teenage or college or get all the pressures of sitting in and all that stuff that there is someone by their side uh, because sometimes they'll just take themselves out, right, Um, through distraction because of the primitiveness of this planet and their high sensitivity and empathicness. So how do you know if you are a starseed? I'm sure you guys are asking yourself. Well, one way, uh, my first earliest note, even though I wasn't conscious of it when I was young, is when I was young, a little girl, I remember looking up at the sky with my dad and I found the Pleiades, you know, that very kind of faded triangle shape of seven uh, stars, or actually more than that. But And I asked my dad, dad, and I pointed to that. And I said, what's that? And he said, honey, that's called Seven Sisters of the Palladians. And somewhere in the back of my beingness, I knew I had been there and are from there. I've been, I'm from a lot of places, but that was like a home to me. And uh, later, much later in research, I found out that the Palladians are one of our cousins. And indeed, we migrated from there. And that's a whole other story. But these are examples for you. Like if you look up at the stars with longing, 
or attraction. And you you feel many star seeds don't feel like they fit into Earth particularly. So if you're attracted to a bright planet or a glowing cluster of stars, you might be feeling your soul's connection to a past or future life, right? And science even says you are made of stardust. So given that you came from stardust and you're infused with divine light, uh, you will have a um, just an inner recognition of this. And you're also a true descendant of faraway light bodies on planets and everything else we'll get into at some later time. So uh, in terms of science, right, you are made of stardust. And also, uh, fairly recently, thank heavens, uh, it's estimated that there are over 10 billion galaxies in the known universe. And many say there are over 100 billion stars in the Milky Way, our home galaxy, right? So that's like something like 1 billion trillion stars in this universe. So consider the possibility that uh, there is a lot of life out there. And I have to say, I don't like saying this, but I have to say that I don't have much patience for someone who just basically doesn't believe life is out there because to me, I hate to say this, it is ignorance at this point. It just is ignorance. So, um, and especially to us starseeds, you know, we're like, okay. So when we wonder about our origins, um, we might consider that the earth is one of many experiments during a time when collaboration of off-world races and on-world seeded stars and planets to grow new worlds. And Ileana found this to be true through Booth's, through actual experience. She was a uh, super soldier and an engineer off-world. And I have found that to be true through my research. So uh, as traveling souls, we not only have this planet to consider, but many others throughout the billions of galaxies, realms, and universes. And within also many continuums of space-time because time actually malleable and we can travel forward and backward in time and all kinds of things as quantum mechanics and physics is starting to elucidate for people and it will be pretty common within the next 10 years where everyone will be able to understand this more, including simultaneous parallel lives. So, you know, while you're here doing the Earth thing, which is major challenging, Uh, But I have a lot of fun things to share with you in my next show. Very, very positive. Um, We also are living simultaneous co-joined lives in a variety of places. Okay, so that's how big we are. This is just one fractal of our higher self, and we're focused on this to live out what our mission is and what we want to learn. So, and Earth continues to evolve and pretty much has an equal balance of physical and, well, you on earth have an equal balance of physical and angelic experiences. And there's millions of star seeds, like I said, have chosen to live among us, and they are hoping to serve and help us and especially help raise our consciousness and help the planet, add light to the planet. And some of them are here for their own karmic patterns, And um, they are equally challenged to remember this. But once they get an inkling, they will go with it faster than other humans who have not had too much starseed experience. So how do you know if you are a starseed? You might have a quiet sense that you came from somewhere beyond this planet. You might, in your imaginings or dreams, have... uh, see yourself with different physical experiences on other places, and maybe you fantasize a lot about in other galaxies with the hope of incarnating somewhere else, right, especially if you're having a tough time here. And uh, a lot of uh, star seeds are, you know, uh, this dates us, of course, but Star Trek or go, you know, watch science fiction movies because, quite frankly, in the last 15 years, 
90% of the science fiction movies are science nonfiction, and it is part of a disclosure project to get people up to speed about the science we have, the capability we have, the space forces we have, all kinds of things. So, And that's why the kids are being raised on those games. And I guess uh, The Mandalorians, I haven't watched that, but, you know, a lot of people love that also. So if you're attracted to any of that, like, likelihood is you're a star seed. So... Let's see. And, you know, the pressures on Earth, I don't need to tell you this, the pressures on Earth are to fit in, to belong, to be part of the pack, to feel kinship with someone, you know, a family group, culture, society. And so that's normal. And to fill our hearts and we want to be inspired. And a lot of people crave acceptance and connection or at least appreciation and validation. So in order to do that, we tend to adorn ourselves with labels, whether it's the conservative Democrat, I'm a recovering Catholic, I'm an eight in the Enneagram, or even I'm a starseed Palladian or anything like that. So please remember uh, for this show that, yes, these are very strong aspects of yourself, but they're really temporary self-identities the personality constructs when we build on the other side before incarnating our personas, relationships, and life path. So don't limit yourself ever to, you know, one particular label because that is not who you are. And uh, in order to expand, we must be willing to move towards knowing we are everything in the field of oneness, being a fractal of the one. And uh, we're also just kind of acting in a certain way. This is a holographic projected reality as best we know that is projected from consciousness and consciousness is king or queen and directs everything uh, from the higher self and through us. So like Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage and we are the players. So we've chosen what we've chosen because there is learning and service in that. So you might ask the term, you know, a lot of people heard uh, the term light worker. So you might go, what's a light worker, right? Well, like the name says, they tend to be special souls, and they actually come from a variety of planets and realms who have agreed to incarnate to help Earth other worlds evolve. All right, so they take birth and uh, on a planet to up level humanity and raise the consciousness of everyone around them. They are beings of light, and they work solely with the light. They can get stuck. They can, you know, that's always a temptation of coming to earth, right? So their primary purpose is to spread kindness, goodness, and love to every living being they meet. And um, they're not so beholden to any planet, culture, society, or mission, all right? They're basically light workers. They come in to spread light. So hope that helps you. I'm sure all of you listening are light workers. There's also another little term called star traveler. And these are kind of beings travel that really travel through stargates, dimensions, planets, galaxies, and universe, both in corporeal bodies and semi-corporeal or energy bodies. And they study other races, energetics, and they kind of are serving, being record keepers of how life is created and preserved in all realities of existence. So I'm sure many of you have heard of the term Akashic Records, and that is a field that contains all memory, thought, words, and deeds of every being on the planet, and there's a separate Akashic Record surrounding each planet that records that. And some people are very good at accessing that, and that's one way you can access your parallel lives, past lives, even future lives, as well as the DNA inside your body, both physically and the light DNA, which is etheric that overlays the physical, contains all the information of all your lifetimes, as well as what we're supposed to be focusing on right now, which is healing and ending the dysfunction of our ancestors by ultimate forgiving. 
and integrating. That is one of the three major functions we have right now. Okay, so, um, and of course the theme is resonance. I tend to use the theme and the importance of resonance in almost every show. So, and, and let's get into starseed characteristics, like I promised. And let's look at their physical traits and abilities, because I get asked questions about that. And you may be frustrated that basically star seeds come in all shapes and sizes. They don't like to be limited. And they often will be gender fluid. They're not restricted on mores and religious doctrine and educational doctrine is easily as people who've had more, shall we say, uh, lives on earth. So it would be fair to say that stark seeds do come in all shapes and sizes. Now, they are here walking among us, tons, 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 uh, as well as off-worlders. Um, and you can kind of recognize them by the look in the eyes. There's a certain brightness. And sometimes their eyes are a little bigger or slightly slanted, but in general, they come in all sizes. And actually, if you really look at it, physical attributes have, you know, little meaning when it comes to our spiritual evolution and awakening. So uh, the focus is more on sacred relationship and evolving, which we now, as of several days ago, are in fourth dimension and moving through it, and we have now become a planet of light rather than darkness, which I will share with you in my New Year show. So, um, let's see. So, in terms of the abilities of star seeds, all living beings, no matter who they are, have a unique purpose, right? And that is soul-specific, and so you bring in the skills and talents that you've had in other lifetimes that you will need for your mission or your purpose in this lifetime. So they can be found in almost every industry. Uh, they're rarely found in working for Monsanto or someplace like that, someplace that is toxifying or, you know, destroying the planet. They're much more likely, but they have worked in corporations, but they usually don't stay there, especially as the awakening continues very long. Uh, they, If they do, they come in to like a more darker corporation to serve as a light being in that and to learn. So they can be everything, teachers, dancers, artists, politicians. Uh, you know, they can be depressed, joyful, wild, uh, limited or expansive. So it's not like they're aliens that are different than us. It's just um, it's easier for them to expand and perceive and conceive of the bigger picture concepts and advanced science and things like that, they have a little less programming that they have to break and conditioning, but they still have to break it and they still can be conditioned, which is why, as Kathy said, uh, you know, only 20% of the 50% live their lives out here because it's so hard for them. But we're going to change that. In terms of their emotional and social awareness, um, they, of course, almost all of them are empathic and highly intuitive and have great emotional intelligence, EEI, so, or EQ, if you want to say it. So, um, and again, uh, kind of, they have a huge array of ideologies and experiences and knowledge. They study a lot because they've lived in a variety of worlds. And so it stands to reason, right, that star seeds possess brighter hearts and accumulated wisdom. So they're, they're great to know, and we have huge amounts, and I am sure all of you guys are star seeds. I really am. So I hope that you're resonating to some of this. And also remember that any soul can digress and can lose its truth and who it is. And any digressed soul can expand at any moment and based upon one congruent decision made, okay, honoring the truth of their being. In terms of intelligence and consciousness, uh, let's see, star seeds are, as, you, as I was trying to explain, are part of spiritual lineages 
that seek to help humanity. And they generally have higher levels of intelligence, and they generally find it a little easier to be uh, expanded into collective consciousness to to uh, be aware of the collective consciousness of all the people together. And their sole purpose is really assisting human beings. So they often will show up as healers, you know, and healers of using light, sound, and color because we use those in Atlantis, Lemuria, and those are the most advanced things, and that's why lasers and different things will be popping out more and more and more, and that will ultimately be the fastest way to heal as well as doing the emotional work and the energetic cleansing work. So there are, like I said, some who come to earth to burn off whatever, their own karma, and learn and heal themselves. So uh, it's really important that you don't think star seeds are more evolved than human beings, so to speak, in quotes, human beings. It's not true. Every soul, whether from this world or another, is fulfilling a purpose. Every soul is unique and important. And every soul in its own way is pursuing knowledge, experience, and expansion on some level. So a starseed's birthright is to invite intelligence, seek an expanded consciousness, and fully awaken at any moment, which any human can do once they set that as a priority. So um, before we get to the 15, um, well, yeah. Okay, so before I get to the 15 signs that indicate if you're a star CB, um, I would end up, uh, I would like to say that in terms of otherworldly feelings and expansion, uh, if you have released your birth story and trauma, if you've forgiven the past, If you practice non-attachment, if you work on more profound clarity, if you're interested in tracking things to the source, whether it be an illness or anything else, if you commit to keeping an open heart and mind, then you've really freed yourself from a lot of the programming, conditioning, and the basis of constraints here. So a starseed just has, as I said, a more expanded soul in general and can appreciate and align with the nature of other worlds. So if this is true for you also, this is quite a gift and quite an honor. So no matter, remember, where you're from or who you are, you can open yourself to the expanded collective consciousness that pervades all matter and non-matter. And you are never limited by any sex, race, or heritage. You are much more than you realize. And uh, so stay curious, open with discernment and claim your divine heritage. Okay? So let's um, go into the 15 signs quickly of um, that might indicate your star seed, okay? And... Uh, And you can kind of check it off and see how many of these you can relate to. So one is uh, kind of a recognition that as soon as you heard the word starseed, it drew you in somehow. So those of you listening to this radio show are most likely starseeds. And you wanted to find out more. That is a sign. And then you perhaps will go on and start digging yourself. And then the voice inside you will be saying, Oh, I'm re- slowly remembering. This just resonates with me. And as I said before, you're constantly gazing at the stars. You like nature. You're looking up at stars and the sky and the beauty and spaciousness of it all. Okay, so that's like one of the signs. And one is a big one for me is you're always looking at things more deeply. Uh, uh, I don't really, I tell people I'm really direct and I tell them I'm not interested in shallow conversations. I really do. So um, most starseeds find it really boring. Some are really kind and they're really patient and they'll hang in there with it. But, um, and some are too afraid to voice their opinion uh, because they have all these questions bubbling up inside them for a long time. 
And when you are younger, one of the signs, which happened to me, is I was a why baby, is you ask questions. And, you know, like, why? Why, why is this? Or it's because intrinsically it doesn't particularly make sense to you, whether it's a religious concept or what you learn in school. The problem is that for many of you, you got shut down or you got ridiculed or worse. So eventually, star seeds stop asking. But deep down, always wondering the why of things. And um, so that is definitely a sign because they're wisdom seekers, okay? That's what they are. They're always seeking more wisdom, which is not just more knowledge. I look at wisdom as knowledge applied wisely, okay, in your actual life. So another kind of sign is you often feel like you don't belong. And so that's why you might feel like a black sheep, a gray sheep. Uh, You might have uh, had some friends, but maybe you were shy in school. As a child, by the way, starseeds, before they get shut down, can be quite loud, adventurous, and outspoken. And then we get to, they get to school, and they kind of shut down, or they fight the teachers and stuff, but they're usually kinder than that. So they usually shut down and become more of an observer than a participant. So when you get older, sometimes they even find it harder to fit in, and they're not interested. Here's a big sign. They're not interested in most of the things normal people their age are. So uh, so they'll kind of relegate to be more comfortable in their own company, and they sometimes struggle to integrate it all. So hopefully along the way, uh, you guys have all found a community of souls like this radio show and Nicole's programs uh, that get us and remind us of home and are mutually supportive so that you don't feel so alone or like you're crazy. So. Uh, some have the feeling of wanting to go home, like this isn't their home. And some have said to me, I'm sure I'm adopted, you know. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure that's a, a fairly common thing. Um, and some really firmly know that their true home is far away from here. Uh, and those are especially ones that have, you know, traveled or been there a lot. And this is one of their uh first earth incarnations in a long time. Now, another sign is that you're very intuitive and psychic. Now, it doesn't mean you're full-blown psychic yet, but it means the potentials are there. And the more, um, one of the discussions in the future I'll have is the more what's called extraterrestrial DNA you have in you, which everyone does, the more of, uh, the more likelihood you have to bring forth uh, special abilities, which aren't special, they're birthrights, but they're things like telekinesis, intuition, um, telepathy, things like that. Okay? So that makes it a little easier to bring those forward if you've had enough lives off this planet. Uh, so they're, you're very intuitive, and um, you can just have a knowingness or feeling about some someone and not always know why. You generally know when someone's lying. You can tell if their actions and words are inconsistent and it's confusing to you. Um, you may follow a, a spontaneous whims with no real explanation, except a deep sense of knowing and excitement, and they turn out to be good decisions. And when you don't follow those, they turn out to be not so good decisions. So another sign is you're extremely empathic, which we talked about, to the point where for many it's hard for them to be out in public because you feel everything and everyone, and that can become incredibly overwhelming at times, right? So it can cause you to stay away for sure from crowds, so probably those of you are are okay about, uh, you know, uh, self-isolation at your home during this COVID time. The other thing is whether or not you're really big on animals or babies, depending on uh, what you had in your previous lives off world, they, animals and babies are drawn to you big time. Even They will just come over to you. They gravitate to you. If 
uh, there's a bunch of dogs in a room. They will come over to you. And, uh, you know, even if you don't like cats, a cat will come over to you. And babies always will look at you directly in the eyes. So that's another sign. And also you're spiritual. Uh, I don't mean religious per se. I mean spiritual. Um, most old souls and most starseeds, et cetera, are not in organized religion. Uh, they don't need that level of guidance and they don't need that level of rules outside themselves. They're not big on rules. They believed in listening to their own self and their own knowing. So someone's you know, family might be Catholic and they grew up in that faith but they re- they maybe never really bought, bought into it, so they call themselves recovering Catholics, for instance. Uh, usually this happens in their 20s, and they will just refuse to go back to church. Um, however, they believe in divinity, other realms, the mysteries of the universe, cosmos. They're always on a quest to learn more. Generally, our, our starseeds are filled with books, videos, podcasts, our homes, our bookshelves. So we're inquisitive and we're always learning, which is great for our brains, by the way. Um, So let's see. Another sign would be that you love fantasy and what people call fantasies, ha, 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 and mysteries of the world. You name it, you've looked into it. So they could be wizards, fairies, mermaids, unicorns, ancient worlds, the pyramids, Stonehenge, Atlantis, Lemuria, um, quantum physics, astrology, numerology, uh, how to activate your psychic abilities. The list goes on and on and on, and you will probably learn, keep learning your whole life. I know I will. It will keep our brains young, right? Also, if you've ever had anyone intuitive, um, read you or talk with you, they probably will refer to you as an old soul. And uh, starseeds star get used to that phrase. And um, like what sometimes happens is when other kids are out playing, this wasn't true in my case, but when other kids were out playing, a lot of starseeds preferred to be more quiet reading books or studying. Uh, They have this real thirst for knowledge, as I said, and sometimes they can be in their own little world. And quite frankly, uh, compared to what they know in their subconscious and conscious, but what they know, uh, most of what they're taught in school is so primitive and so outdated that they're daydreamers and um, they're in their own little world. So they also tend to feel they're far older, even though they're actually the youngest one in their family. But they still feel like, oh, my God, I'm like the parent, you know. So the other thing is people tend to come to you for advice on all kinds of things uh, because you just seem to have wise answers, right? That's from our old soul experiences. You also don't have time for pettiness. So people that get upset about the dumbest things eventually bother you or you find that – the things that interest people to be incredibly mundane after a while, the conversations are just repetitive, right? Like mainstream news, it's just a script. They're all repetitive. Um, You get tired of people not thinking for themselves. Um, And you try and not really interested in numbing out on alcohol or watching TV. And this can be led to misunderstanding from others. They may think you're snobby or aloof where you're not. You're just trying to keep yourself in alignment with why you're here. So, and I'm sure many starseeds are perplexed why more people don't invest more time in self-improvement. Now, through the years, it's becoming more and more a lot of self-improvement on health and their body and more now with meditation and um you know, things like that, which is good, more on the spiritual bent, because we need a balance of all of that, of course. So um, let's see, there's a few more traits. Uh, You know, you have a strong sense that you're here for a purpose, but you struggle to pinpoint it. One of my dearest friends, and uh, we'll just call her initial G, she's at that point right now. She's so capable and so old soul and 
has so many abilities and has so many responsibilities and um, we're trying to get her to extricate some of those and and so she can uh, she says, I just know I have a big purpose and I'm underutilized. So many of you may feel like that. Uh, so perhaps it's it's like, how do I simplify my life, which is part of what COVID was about, sequestering, to reevaluate those that didn't have to work and could use that time to rebalance ourselves more, uh, things like that. And... Uh, Starseeds basically want to be free no matter what. This doesn't mean they don't love and they don't care, but uh, they want to do, follow their own soul promptness and be spontaneous. Uh, They don't want the rest of their life to be the same. They find that really tedious, right? I mean, we even get tired of cooking dinners or whatever. And they definitely know, like I said, that you know you're here for a greater purpose for a long time and may just be having a hard time putting your finger on it. So I would say in the last five years or so, a lot of people have quit their corporate jobs or find themselves out of corporate jobs, which uh, gives them an opportunity to align with their true purpose. So also you have a real challenge with systems and authority. So these are really old souls. And so we don't take kindly to someone else telling us what to do or what we have to do in whatever manner, medically or anything else, Um, not to mention it's against constitution. So uh, whether it's your boss, the government, society, whoever, we all value freedom and uh, do not like being enslaved to anything or anyone. So that goes against, that goes against what we believe in, right? So this one is definitely the majority of star seeds. And the reason why we people quit their jobs is because they clash with their boss or the physical environment is no longer tolerable or they're not appreciated and it's not healthy for them. Or they were micromanaged, <laughs> right? And they're under fluorescent lighting all day, et cetera, et cetera. So... It's kind of, they tend to be anti-system, anti-government, magnified a thousand times. Not rebels in the sense, uh, just like, how dare you tell me what to do? (laughs) You know, that kind of thing. It's like a respect for free will. So they don't have to be fighters, but um, they'll get a lot of pressure from the sheeple who want them to do what they want them to do. Uh, and in many cases, these star seeds know what is the appropriate thing for them to do. So um, you got two more things really quickly. Um, you love serving others, right? Helping others is something you find yourself doing all the time, uh, and it expands your heart. Uh, most women I talk to that are star seeds are recovering people pleasers. They have to learn to say no thank you and find the balance in taking care of themselves with others. And they still need to, however, put it right, put yourself first in order to shine your best light. And the last one I'll bring up is often you will have a connection to what's called angel numbers or repeating numbers, like 1111 or 111 or 222 or 444 or 555. And these numbers appear anywhere and everywhere. And it's definitely a sign you're starting and on your spiritual awakening. So the more you pay attention to these numbers and just laugh and giggle with it, you'll be able to discern what it means for your life or what we're just focused on or talking about. And as you take the heart-inspiring and soul-inspiring steps in your life that align with your purpose, these numbers and affirmations can be clues to listen to. So uh, we only have a couple more minutes left, so I just wanted to thank you so much for this. And in the next show, I am going to be, I am going to be discuss of um, well, actually, the star seed types, okay, which are walking this planet and from other worlds, and that should be really interesting. Plus, some really, really inspiring positive news, which is the first time in eons that is occurring on this Earth right now. So I hope you'll join me in two weeks. Uh, my website's www.soulsolutions, uh, okay, supersoulsolutions.com is my website. And just 
I know it's easy to become distracted by latest spiritual systems or spiritual media stars, but to truly transcend, we don't have to follow anyone or go anywhere. You can do it in your living rooms. And you were birthed as a beautiful, powerful, vibrant soul. You really have unlimited potential. And whatever persona you're playing out is the small you that you've taken on, but your higher self is the one you want to be communing with and you want to give your loyalty to no one else other than family, but no one else outside, you know, channeling messages to you. I believe in just doing it with your higher self because that is going to give you the most appropriate uh, information for you and for yourself. Thank you so much for the love, and thank you all you star seeds, wanderers, light workers, angelic humans that are here at this time. I love you all, and Merrily Christmas.